Hi everyone, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and today we are making some very fun, very pretty, very easy embellishments for our junk journals. And I want to show you how these can be used, but before I get into that I want to show you something really quick I came across and these may be uh, the, I don't know if these are the oldest, but these may be some of the oldest, very first, um, possibly, uh, original junk journals ever made and they're made by young girls back in 1907 and 1908 and actually I just came across these in some vintage ephemera that I purchased and I just was you know they're very simple but they're I just like ugh, like see the crafty paperness is was in us from a long time ago so let me show you what we have we have isn't this cute um it says June E. Clark memorandum Frances E. Clark. So maybe it was a sister making it for a sister and she tied it together with a little string and she just put together some little book pages. Isn't that cute? I mean she was just working out this on her own by herself and uh, she made that. So I thought that was really really adorable. Did her own little design on the front. And then the next one came along and it was in the same pile of stuff, June 1907. At first I thought that said 67, but then I found this other one that says 1907. So I'm pretty sure that's a 1907. A Merry Christmas. And she tied it together. And uh, Francis. And uh, she made it like, she numbered the pages this time. So this was, she was upgrading her uh, skill level, making, um, more intricate journals and who knows how old this little girl was but I just think it's fascinating and she obviously gave this to somebody for Christmas and this somebody saved it and I think that is so sweet and uh, look at that that's some type of uh, like pressed or handmade paper or something back then I don't think it, maybe not handmade but maybe like I don't know um, packaging paper or something something and uh, then the last one is a little bit bigger she was upgrading her skill level again a Merry Christmas from Francis again tied together and this one she has it it must have been like Christmas of 1907 and then 1908 it must have been like a calendar a day planner she had an idea so this she was well well beyond her years and uh, timeliness and uh, uh, I just thought that was pretty cool how uh, people are putting together books many moons ago at all different levels and isn't that awesome so there you go just a quick show and tell there want to show that and uh, okay so today we're making these little lovelies and let me uh, explain what they are. I'm calling them uh, paper edge trims or you can also use them for um, belly bands and things like that. And let me just give you an example of one. So this is one. Okay, so it's made with, uh, I actually used gauze, but you could use cheesecloth. And they're very easy to make, very quick, very fun. The original ones I made were just plain uh, and sewn on and I think that looks good too but then I thought I wanted to show a no here's another sewn Now my sewing skills are not the best but you know they work for me in my little papery world my poor sewing machine I put it through the mill but uh, it, it said it was okay with whatever I did to it yes go forth and uh, create paper magic it said so I am or trying <laughs> uh, see then this one I put on a dictionary page, little strip. And uh, then I started hiding the strip more and making it more about the, um, the gauze, but then not, tried not sewing it just to see if it would stay and how it looked. And actually, I think I like this look better myself. Okay, so then I did a, a green and a blue one. And yes, those are stickles and liquid pearls and Nouveau drops and things like that. The Nouveau drops give you bigger dollops, it seems, because the, the hole is bigger on the opening of the, the Nouveau drop. And the last one, a brown and gray one. And you say, how would we use these? This makes no sense to me. What are you thinking? Okay, so pull out this. I have no idea how this journal is getting so fat so fast. I feel like I've barely done anything in it. Okay, so let's just pick a random page. Here's a page. So let's say you wanted to use this as a page trim. Well, it'd be nice to show you. I'll back you up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So you could use it as a page trim this way and just glue it down. It's just backed with a piece of paper, nothing fancy, and or across the top, 
or you could use these as belly bands and I would recommend using a thicker paper on the back if you're going to make it as a belly band or um, a thinner paper if you're going to use it as a page trim because these will create some bulk in your journal. They're not super bulky honestly they're, they're pretty thin because they squish down completely pretty much because they're they're just gauze or cheesecloth but uh, yeah you can have a lot of fun with these and do all sorts of different styles and things in here. So Hmm? Hmm? Oh, it's kind of shabby chic in a way. All right, so let's make some of these guys. They're very easy, and I want to show you. I'm so proud. I'm, I'm organized. Let me show. Let me show. Look at that. Look how they're all ready to go with their little no daubers. I've, I've cleared the decks, so the gremlins have been swept away, swept away, and we shall see how it goes. Okay, don't hold me to it. All right. Okay, so these are the examples. Let me just put these over here. And what I'll do is I'm going in my scrap pile right now and I'm just cutting, I have a, like a leftover piece of scrap paper. Hi Holly, good morning sunshine. Yes, we're making a video. And I would say I'm making a, a strip cut, I would say about a half an inch. This one didn't even come out exactly even, but that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna flip it over, or you could flip it this side. It, maybe you want to have some color behind. Doesn't matter, totally up to you. But, um, oh, where's my book? Let me get my, my little book. Okay, we're ready now. All right, and what I'm using is I took some gauze. You know, this these square gauze pads? Um, no, these aren't used. No, 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 no. These are um, dipped in uh, coffee and then uh, squeezed out and left to dry. So this is kind of what I got, just kind of a, a mishmash of uh, different colors as it dried. Um, yeah. So what you do is you open one of these up. Let me see. Can you see? Okay, I got to stand up so you can, I know you can see. Okay, no laziness here. Okay, these open up like this. These are like those medical bandages, gauze things. I think I got these at an old estate sale somewhere. Um, so it opens up like that once. And then each side opens up again. Okay, so you open it up to that level. So you've got this long strip. Now it can actually open up one more time like a, a book, but I don't want it to be too thin. So I'm going to leave it at this level. And then before I do anything else, Holly, oh, let me get some, uh, okay. I am going to ink it up a little bit to give it a little color and you can leave them neutral or you can um, use them white and it doesn't matter, but I just happen to be starting with these because I had a pile of them already. So let's put some color down. Let's go with maybe some pink. This is all I did. I just grabbed it, my dauber and I put it on there and then I just sort of skipped a spot that went down a row. Maybe I want to do two colors on this one. And maybe I'll do this one pink and purple. I don't think I have a pink and purple one yet. So let me try that. And oh, I'm sorry. That was worn lipstick, distress oxide. And this is seedless preserve, regular ink. And I use them interchangeably, but uh, there are subtle differences between the inks. I think the oxides have uh, pigment and dye and then the uh, inks just have dye but and that will allow you to do different things with water and things like that with the pigment and dye or even with the water or the dye I don't know I, but um, uh, there we go we have that. maybe we need a little extra something in there maybe like a, a break color like uh, let's put some green in all right we're, we're feeling devilish can you see me yep okay I'm trying to stay in screen all right here we go there. 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 Doesn't matter if they catch. It's okay. Because the more, the more uh, like disorganized, almost the better. They almost want to become little things on their own. I imagine if you pulled a string, it would become a, a thing, a little uh, crunched up thing on its own. Um, but let's try this. Okay. Now, I get a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut this into three long strips. So two cuts is going to give me three long strips. And that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's all going to be scrunched together in the end, but you just want to have at least three to work with because they, they scrunch up pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, we have a Twitter fest is uh, up and at them this morning. Everybody's having fun. 
We're rocking, going to town. Mm-hmm. Okay, there we go. We've got three strips. Now one side's going to have a stronger coloration and the other side's going to be more plain. So I would leave them coloration side up. Colored side up. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, colored side up. All right, now let's take the strip that we had. Let me turn this sideways maybe. Move you guys over there. And I'm going to use a Fabrifix. This is what I used with it because I wanted a, a fast grab. Um, and this is a clear silicone glue. It's great with fabric to fabric, fabric to paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead all along here. Can you see? Yep. Okay. Running, running a bead. And a fair size bead. Like don't be chintzy on this one. Give it some good glue because you're going to be working for a bit on the strip and it dries down at the end. So you want to get moving. Okay. So in the beginning, can you see? Get you closer. Okay. In the beginning, scrunch it up a little bit to have an end, like an end to start on. Put it there and kind of mush it together. Now, here's the tricky part. You want to grab this in your hand. I tried this a few ways. I think this is the easiest way. Grab it in your hand. Can you see? And uh, you, you can lay it down, but then you want to Move, hold on to your thingy and then move it this way and that gives you your scrunch. See that? But you don't want to lay it down too soon or else it's harder to move because you got so much on there. So scrunch gets a little gluey. It is a little gluey. All right, hold that. And uh, sometimes you have to kind of go in there and unglue yourself. Um, but then just give it a good scrunch and you might get like a halfway or a third of the way with one. Just go back and make sure that your your paper is covered. It's not perfect. It's okay. And you could actually darken your paper or lighten your paper or do something like that in the beginning too to help mask the paper behind. Uh, but I'll show you a way to uh, fix that if you have some bald spots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's try the same thing. Let's grab this up. Make our little starter. I hope you're seeing this. Um, okay, start there, stretch it out. Don't lay too much down because it'll get too confusing. Um, and then start sliding. And sometimes you have to hold on to the white piece underneath to allow the proper translation and application of the gauze onto the strip. All right, we'll just stick that down. Sometimes you just got to do it. Okay, okay, now starting to get a little, not a little dry yet, but um, a little tacky. Tacky for the fingers here. Okay, but it seems to work pretty good. Um, okay, so a little further. And let's just ball all that up. Okay, and then we have one more. So I'm going to put, I'm going to make a little ball. Am I in the middle? Can you see? Okay. And let's scorch it up. This is uh, scorching. Yeah, we are scorching this morning. Mm-hmm. All right, put a nice little... Let's like cut a little end piece, a little extra on the end so that you can... I got a glue ball on there. Oh, we got to get out of there. Okay, oh, we got rid of it. Yay. Um, let's just get it in there and stuck on. We can always go back with a little more glue if needed. Okay, so this is what we have. All right, so a couple little bald spots. That's okay because we have a little extra and we can come in here with what I call our patches. So we're going to just cut this last little piece up in little bits and we're going to use it as little patches to fill in any any little bald spots. And uh, where are we? Let me see if you can see. Can you see? Oh, I'm running all over the place again. Okay, let me back up just a little bit. All right. Okay. There. Try to keep everything in the center for you here. Okay, so oh, bald spot, bald spot. Okay, so let's just go back here. And you can either put the glue here or here, but I think it's maybe better to put it here because once you stick it on here, it's hard to get your glue bottle off there. So there, see how that kind of covers that? And there's another little bald spot. Nope. All right. And the glue will soak through the layers of the gauze. So you don't have to glue every little double down. Um, as you, at when you, once you're finished, you can push on the whole thing as it little, dries a little bit and it will grab the loose layers. Oh, I see. I put it on the bottom now. See, uh, you know, I change my technique as I go. Yes. It's hard to do reckless abandon and, and pay attention to what I'm supposed to be doing at the same time. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, right? Okay, here we go. And stick that down. It comes loose in little threads, but as you see, if you're, if you're swift, you can get in and out of there. 
All right, I think I'm in shot. Okay, put some on here. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Oh, no, you need to go there. So we'll put you there. That looks good. Yeah. Okay. Just a little tricky getting out of there sometimes. Um, let me just put a little more glue here because I've got enough here, I think. And if I don't, I have an extra piece. One more repair piece. One more repair piece. Okay. And we put that down. Okay. Now. All right. Where are, that's pretty much the gist of making the base. Very easy. And what I would recommend is maybe using hand tool to come along and just mush it down a little flat because you'll be able to see any bald spots that are still, you know, an issue. Let me back up just a little bit. Let's see what I'm doing. Okay. All right. So if I have a little bald spot, I can still maneuver around a little bit and try and hide them. Okay. And uh, sometimes there's enough glue down there already. Sometimes you got to come in with a little backup glue. That happens in life. Um, okay. Now, if you see a loosey goosey, and this might be a loosey goosey. Yeah. You could just put a little more glue down there. Yeah. And give it the hand treatment. There we go. Sometimes it sticks a little. It's okay. And uh, so now maybe we want to jazz it up a little bit. Yes, Holly says, definitely, Mom, jazz it up a little bit. You know what you need to be reaching for. Go get those. Go get those stickly things. Go get those liquid pearls and those Nouveau drops. So I'm pulling these out. This is a bottle basket of Nouveau drops. This one is crystal drops, bright gold. Maybe I'll play with liquid pearls. These make smaller little uh, pearlized uh, drops. What color are you? You are oyster. And uh, you can also do stickles. Why not? Stickles are glitter glue, basically. They take longer to dry. But uh, okay. Let's try this. What color? What color? What color? Well, let's see. A little contrast of something here. Maybe this one. This is ancient gold. Uh, maybe I'll try that one because that might stand out a little bit. All right. And you could alternate the colors too. So I just put in top. Okay. Down up is the technique. Down up. Uh, down up. 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 Can you still see? Let me move it over. No, oh, I'm going to move the whole thing. Uh, down up, down up, down up, down up. And then you can cut these to whatever size you need when you're making your projects. Um, so now all you need to do is uh, let this sit aside and dry. So I am going to show you this one now. See, came out really cute, right? You could stick other things on there too. This is just uh, one way to do it. And I'm just going to slide this and put this on my, my little drying trunk below me. Okay. And then I, it's in the land of don't touch it, Pam. Okay. <laughs> Until it's dry. All right. So how are we doing on time? We are, oh, yeah, we could probably make another one. Let's make another one. Okay. I'm going to show you one of the sewing ones. And I think what I'm going to try and do, I don't know if this is going to work, but these sewing ones that I did before, I do like, there's nothing wrong with them, but they really do show the paper beneath and I hadn't really perfected my technique of hiding the paper. Um, so let me try hiding the paper and I'll sew it and you, so you can just see what that looks like. So I'm going to go and I'm going to cut another strip. I'm over here at my guillotine. I'm, I haven't left the building or anything. I'm just right here. And now this is the key. You want thin strips because if you make them thick, then it's going to show. See how much shows? And I even thought this was thin, but now I'm going with this and this is probably half an inch max. Okay. So let's try this and I'm going to put it colored side up this time just to see. Well, let me prepare my, let me prepare my gauze first. Okay. Opening my gauze and then opening these closet doors and that gives me the long strip. Okay. And it'll be interesting to sew on that skinny strip. I don't see if I can do it. Um, okay, now maybe I'll just do a neutral one so you can see what a neutral one looks like. Yes, Holly, yes. Okay, this is just neutral brown, coffee dyed. Um, like I said, you could use white, you could use 
um, any color and or, or you know and you can also color these with anything um, watercolor spray inks uh, makeup um, you know nail polish uh, that would be weird but you could try it and uh, shoe polish and um, all sorts of like you know chalk and uh, there's like a million things and pigment is pigment so if you can get it on there um, it'll work <laughs> all right Actually, maybe we'll try that. We have a couple seconds. And I was thinking about pulling out my chocks, which I have not pulled out in a hundred years. All right, let's just pull out any chocks pan, any chocks. Okay, here's some chocks. Chocks. Okay. All right. Call them pastels, but I guess these are chocks, which is a form of pastel, which is different than an oil pastel. So the chocks are like dry ones. Okay, so. Instead of getting a little, I'm just gonna rub them in here and see what happens. Okay, let's try some blue. All right, get some pigment on there. All right, what do we got? Uh, my little strip is still good, yep. All right, I don't think it's gonna stay. I don't know where it's gonna go. Should have nowhere to go. All right, and maybe we'll try some green, you see? Yep, nice little green-blue combo here. Maybe just turn it around a bit, rub it in the chalks. I think kids' chalk will work too. Now, this is just like artist chalk, but you can use kids' chalk. I don't see why it wouldn't work. All right, so that's a colored strip. And maybe let's try some different colors. Let's try purple. This one is just totally an experiment, so just roll with me here. I'm not going for artistic design. We're just trying to see if the chalk will stick. Okay, and maybe a pink, huh? Okay, purple and pink. Okay. Didn't I just make a purple and a pink? Oh well. All right, maybe open it up a little, roll it around a little more. Okay. As I think once the glue gets in there, um, it's gonna help glue that color down into place. Let's try a darker green. Sure. It's like a teal dark green. All right. Let's see, I haven't used these much at all. It's about time I pulled them out. And uh, how about like this lime green weird stuff? Yeah. Okay, there's a color I don't normally use. Okay, so I've got my three strips. And yes, they're all gonna go on one because I'm just going crazy here. All right. Now, here I come with my glue. All right, can you see? Yep, okay. And I am just gonna put a thick, thicker bead of glue or down because it's a timed thing, so I wanna just glue once and then go in and do my process. So let's see how this works. Wish me luck. Okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, I see a little chalk dust flying. Okay, I'm gonna ball up the end and smush it down, lay it down a bit and then slide it. The more you slide it together, the less bald spots you're gonna have. Yep, all right. Yep, yep. Oh, what was the word, smirch? Smooch, smoosh. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, smunch, snurp, snurp, snurp. New word, snurp. We're snurping it. Oh, that came out very, very small. Okay, but very bunched, so I don't have to do any bald fixing. Okay, that's good. All right, I see a little loose chalk dust here, so we'll see how that all comes out in the wash. Oh, all right, we'll just do a little bunchy in the beginning. And we'll slide her up. Come on, get up there. So I can feel the glue starting to dry a little bit. And you want to kind of keep your, your gauze open a little bit. Don't let it, like, go to a tight string rope sort of thing because you want your sm smooching to, to, I guess we're ruk rutching, rooking. Depends what part of the country you're from. Um, those of you who have fancy sewing skills can probably do this on a sewing machine, but uh, no, we're starting at ground zero here. And we're doing the, the non-sew sew technique today. <laughs> so I will show you how to, uh, how I do it with my little clunker from Walmart, which is, if anybody's curious, it's a, uh, it's a brother project runway. It has, oh, oh. 99 stitches on it. And that's really why I bought it. I wanted the, the different stitches. Um, but I figured, you know, it was a good workhorse. And it is. It's, it's, uh, it's been very kind to me. And I have put it through uh, quite some challenges, let me tell you. 
and uh, it has always forgiven me. And you know what I find that it's not that hard when something goes awry with the sewing machine that you can just like unplug it or turn it off and then sort of take it apart a little bit and you sort of wiggle everything loose and get all the strings unstuck from where they were all jammed up where you finally realize that, yes you do you do have to clean underneath your sewing foot and under in the little trapped vestibule areas down below occasionally which I got scoffed at initially like oh I'm not going to be doing that well apparently it'll just say whoa Nelly you're not sewing anymore until you give me a good cleaning. Mm-hmm. That, yep, that happened last week. So I'm like, oh, okay, I remember. My good friend Kathy said, yo, you'll know. You'll see. You'll see. And I'm like, really? She said, yes. Well, she's a, oh, she's a professional seamstress and, um, you know, she knows her stuff. So she was right on the money. Way to go, Kathy. Right on the money. And, uh. I met Kathy in a Tuesday morning craft section. We got to yak in one morning in there. And uh, then we found out we go to the same place to craft. A little store in our hometown. Um, kind of a, a beautiful little area. And uh, we, we had a lot of fun crafting. We still craft together. Um, okay. So, um, well, now we do it over the internet, I guess. <laughs> uh, she likes to show me her projects and I, I show her mine. And, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm stuck in the glue, glue, do this one, and you glue it, sometimes you gotta wait a little bit or you're stuck forever. Okay, so I got a little tail there I didn't cover, but that's okay, but I think this one came out pretty good, right? That's sort of pretty. Yeah, all bunched well, not much paper showing, just a little at the end there, but we'll figure that out later. Okay, so now I'm gonna swing over and try and sew this, and I'm gonna, try and have you guys be able to watch it too. So let's try that. Hold on. Okay. Here's my sewing machine. And here is my strip. Now I'm going to turn it on. Oh, do I got to rethread. Let me look. Yeah, I got to hang on. Hang on. Be right back. Okay. I'm all rethreaded and I've got my little piece. I'm going to, whoop, I got my little piece I'm going to work on. Okay. Let me see if I can bring you closer. See how far this arm will go. Okay, now it's a little tricky doing this on a skinny, but we'll try it. I would say start a little in because the whole key with this is you want to be able to grab it at the back and slowly pull as you're sewing because it can get jammed up under there, I think, with all the fuzz and glue and everything. So uh, uh, that's another reason why maybe it's better to just glue it and leave it. Okay, oh, no, wrong stitch. Let's zigzag number four. No, Holly, Holly's singing now. I don't know if you can hear him. Oh, okay. Let me let me just be quiet for a second, see if he'll sing. No, he stopped. Okay, we carry on. <laughs> All right, slowly chugging through. All right, starting to sew in the same. Okay, now you might hear him in the background. Okay, I'm trying to grab this and not sew myself at the same time. Kind of feel where your oh oh did my paper come apart? Maybe maybe I pulled too hard. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, maybe not. It's okay. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it did. <laughs> well, like I said, it's easier to glue this. I'll just give it a slight tug, not too hard, or it, it will tear. I think I feel the paper coming apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's life in the fast lane. I guess you could use a thicker piece of paper or you could actually sew on fabric. That might actually be the cure-all for this nonsense. Everybody's going, get your fingers out of there. I know, no, I'm staying ahead of the guard and I'm watching because I don't want to sew my fingers either. Um, I'm almost done. All right, let's speed it up. All right, eh, rocket speed. Yes, keeping fingers farther away because I'm almost done. Woohoo! Oh, almost, come on. It's only paper now, you can do this. Okay, let's see what that looks like. If that, any of that is worth it. Oh. Huh. Well, I would say that's an epic fail. <laughs> Whoop, you can't see. All right, let me bring you back over here. How not to do it. How not to sew it by Pam at the Paper Outpost. Yes. Okay, so we were sewing okay in the beginning, but then Pam pulled too hard on the paper. So I would recommend fabric underneath. All right, but then apparently there was no string again. Oh, you know what? I think my bobbin's empty. Yeah. 
Oh, pff. well, that'll, that'll, that'll do it. That'll do it. Make sure you have a uh, string in the bobbin. Okay, so anyway, there is what it looks like when you sew it. <laughs> it's very small. Let me show you on the big super. That's all I got because my bobbin ran out. And I think that's what caused the problem with the rest of it. So, um, well, that was fun and dandy. Thanks, Pam, for that. But uh, if you want to see some sewn ones again, um, just picture some of, not that one, not that one, not that one. Let me back you up a bit. Um, not that one. Oh, and, oh, no, not that one. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's the sewn ones. Uh, what they look like with the wider strips. And then just imagine it with a thinner strip. So this worked fine. Had no problem sewing that because apparently I had thread in the bobbin. Okay. Um, okay. So if you found value here, please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, click the notification bell if you want to be notified of every video. Uh, for some reason, just clicking subscribe will only get you some videos. Uh, I don't know why that is, but it just is the way it is, apparently. And... Um, if you want any, any uh, links to any of the uh, favorite tools and supplies, they're linked in my Amazon store below. I have new vintage digital kits that I just uploaded last week. They're mushrooms and uh, tickets and Victorian people and eco-dyed um, uh, leaf papers and something else. Can't think of it right now. Uh, if you haven't joined up for my newsletter, please uh, sign up for that. It, you get a free digital image once a month, plus the checklist of journal, junk journal supplies and the note from the bookmaker. I have now attached everything to the newsletter, um, so you, you will get that every month. Um, uh, what is new every month is the free digital image, but the checklist of supplies and the note from the bookmaker will always be there uh, for easy access for you, so you don't have to be rumbling, where is it, where is it, all that stuff, you'll find it easy. And... Um, uh, my videos come out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. I am in Florida. Uh, my podcasts come out Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, if you like to listen to junk journal related topics that are completely, um, they're not my videos, uh, audio put on the podcast. It's all, all new material. I cover different topics. A lot of fun. And um, take me while you're walking the dog or doing the dishes or cooking stew. Right, Len? <laughs> Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Etsy, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Come join our Facebook group. We're having lots of fun out there playing. It's a really fun, happy group of people that are enjoying showing what they make and sharing tips and tricks and uh, um, answering questions. And uh, it's really a great place to get uh, inspired. We also do weekly and monthly challenges there, which are optional. And um, you uh, are welcome to lurk and just hang out, or you're welcome to jump in and play and post and ask questions and have as much uh, fun as you want. Um, and uh, remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. And there was something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, yeah. Do I have time? Oh, no, probably not. I'll tell you on the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs>